Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is our proof of concept. We are doing our, our five favorites. And the first place we decided we wanted to try this was at the Fantasy Fair Bill. And when you're in something like Second Life, you call the locations that you're at either builds or simulations. But let's tell you a little bit about what's going on today. Okay, this is from the ISTE Games and Simulation Network. And we're looking at games. And we are also looking at simulations. For today, we'll be looking at virtual worlds. Now, remember, these are immersive online environments. They allow the individual to interact with each other in the environment, and virtual worlds are usually accessible 24-7, and the virtual worlds are persistent. And the th key thing about virtual worlds as, is that you go in as an avatar. Now, we're going to be looking at these virtual worlds today. We're going to be in Second Life. We're going to what we call builds, and builds are usually one discrete location that has been built up in a certain way. The way we're going to be looking at these is we're going to pull a couple pieces from the MDA framework. And this is the Mechanics, Dynamics, and Aesthetics framework. And the ones that are highlighted here are the ones that we're going to be looking at. So we pulled them out. Sensation, Fantasy, Discovery, and Expression. Because out of all the things that from that last slide, these are the ones that you're most likely to see in a virtual world. And we are at the Fantasy Fair, and the Fantasy Fair has stayed open an extra week this year. So there are some things to still do, like, for example, you can go to the May Mask Ball, which will be today. You can go ahead, and there is one Literature Fest left. Now, a Literature Fest is when someone actually takes you on a, a guided tour of an area, and the area that they're doing is Ardessa. And when you go on this tour, you can either write as you're doing this hour-long tour, or you have 24 hours to go ahead and write and leave whatever you've written with the tour guide. And then they put it out on their blog, and they also have a radio show. And you might get picked for either the blog or the radio show. One other thing for you to think about, and for ISTE Games and Sims, we went over it earlier this spring. There is another genre that you can take a look at, and it's called literature RPG, or a literature role-playing game. And that's where you actually write something as if you were playing it in the game. And the example that we have here is an example of one of the ones that Chris has read. And Chris and I are going to be giving you a tour real quickly of our favorite five. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kick off our five fave sims. So the first one up is going to be Halls of Story. Okay, so I've taken my viewpoint out a bit so that you can see what it looks like from a distance. But the Halls of Story is actually where the Literature Fest started. And now I'm going to hit Escape. So I come back in here, and that's my avatar there. And yes, I am wearing steampunk wings. But the Halls of Story, as you can see, if you come over here, you get the idea where they're going. The Halls of Story is where all the storytelling and also where all the literature fests begin. It's also the main place where you can go ahead and you can get several of the swag that's associated with the fantasy fair. Now you have here, this is the Minky, and this is supposed to be a pet, but if you saw our, our other version, somehow Grid figured out how to wear this as an avatar also. Now, when it comes to the fantasy fair, the fantasy fair is actually um, part of the Relay for Life, and the Relay of Life is actually gathering funds um, for cancer research. So if you come over here, you can see some of the other swag that's available. You can see the Dragon Fate avatar. You can see that um, you can also look and play on a quest and a hunt. And if you come here, you can get information all about the Lit Fest. And like I said, there is one left. So I'm going to walk you up here. And where we're walking to is the big hall. And let me draw it out a bit again. So this is the big hall. It looks somewhere between like a cathedral 
And something, if you play World of Warcraft, that you'd probably see was considered with the Blood Elves. So this, when you come in here, the storytelling usually happens all the way up here on the front. And for the storytelling area, they have seating for you. And then they, over here, you'll see that they have a group of books that they've been reading and playing with. And yes, wherever you go, you will see signs that go ahead and let you donate. But let's walk over here because I'd like to show you one of my favorite little spots when it comes to the Hall of Story. If you come over here to the side, this is a machinima history of the fairyland. Pull my draw in. Now, if you are not aware of what machinima is, machinima is a portmanteau for cinema and machine. And you might know it as something else like maybe like live play, or you might see things similar on Twitch when they're live streaming. But Machinima is just a little different. And the way that Machinima is different is it usually, it usually is a bit more edited than the live stream things you'll see. So what I clicked on here was basically the first year that they ever did um, Fantasy Fair. And in Second Life, you can go ahead and you can play videos while you're in World, which makes it very nice. And so that one's playing right now. So you can, if you come in here, you can see different videos from all the years that they've done it. Now let's go over here. Let's pick up another one. Click on it. The YouTube URL will show up, and if everything's going well, then you're able to click on it just like any kind of YouTube video. We'll let this one play a little bit more too. But the reason I like this is because you can be in World, and then you can come in here, and you can watch any YouTube video of Machinima that you like yourself. And Machinima, as you can see, can also be very dramatic. You can do a lot, and people use, people go ahead and use Fraps, and they use Camtasia, and just about anything else that you can use for a video, you'll see used here. So after this little area, I'd like to go out here because of what's out here on the hangar. You draw a screen a little. There we go. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty much an airship driven by dragon. So if you come out here, this is also an area where they do dances. And besides seeing the dragon out in the distance, what you also have is... What they call the Fairchild. You can come up here. Come up here a little bit. And this is where you can actually see that they have dances. <laughs> this this is a dance machine. I can also click on here to get dancing. I'm thinking about it and you know what? We're just not going to start dancing here because we, we've promised that this will end in 30 minutes. So we'll get started. I'm going to the next part of this because Chris gets to show his, one of his favorites right after this. So let me come on over here. And again, there are gorgeous views here everywhere. So now take a look at that. I've taken several screenshots on that too. Now, when we talked about the mechanics and dynamics aesthetics, one of the things was sensation. 
players experiencing something unfamiliar. The next one is fantasy. The game is make believe that you're in an imaginary world, and this view is just perfect for that. The next one, discovery. Game is uncharted territory. You have the urge to explore the game world. Absolutely high marks for that. And this next one is expression, your own creativity. For example, creating a character resembling player's own avatar. Well, what I'd have to say here is since we're in a virtual world, it's not just about, your, you know, working on what your avatar is, but it's also going to places and thinking about what can I get that will allow me to go ahead and will allow me to build things myself. And that works with virtual worlds, and it also works with things like Minecraft. So I'm going to fly over here, and I'm going to show you one of my additional favorite spots here in the Hall of Story. Okay, we're going to come up here. And we're going to get close enough to be able to read. Hopefully. But what this is, this is actually, yes, the Hall of Stories betas. So the thing about this is in this area are several prototypes of different things for the virtual world that you can go ahead and buy. And there is actually a virtual economy here in Second Life. Now, the thing about the reason that these are betas, it means that people have designed them and made them for this sim, but haven't tested them out like hugely. And if you go ahead and read any of the comments, you'll, find, you'll quickly find out why. The reason why is because they have spent thousands of hours, and, and it is accurate. They've spent thousands of different hours building things for the Hall of Story, and they might not have gotten time to test out everything yet for someone to buy it, meaning that they're not the editor on it. But this Hall of Beta gives them a chance to go ahead and sell things and offer them up for other people so that they can go ahead and purchase them. And later on, after they've tested them, they'll go ahead and send you the permanent copy. So here's some, here's some examples like Stair Weed Set, Swamp Elder, Snow Star Bush. So if I click on that there, it'll give me a chance to go ahead and buy it. And then it goes, would you, how would you like to pay? I will be paying with Linden's. <laughs> That's an example of how you can go ahead and pay for something like this. So all, all of the beautiful scenery that you see here on this build, you can go ahead and buy it. So that's one of the reasons, besides the beautiful scenery, why I love this area so much. So I will end it here, Chris, and you can show us the next one. So the next one is Etheria. Uh, so Etheria uh, is a build it's part of fantasy fair and as you can see uh it is it looks looks normal you got some nice reflection in the water and you have some nice buildings that are laid out it's very looks very reassuring and it looks kind of familiar maybe more of an indonesian or southeast asian uh look of how things are built but as k scrolls out you see the reflections there and then oh wait, wait a bit there's something that's kind of weird here so uh, Kate goes ahead and moves forward down the ramp that's there just to her left. Built. One of the interesting things about this build is that it's set up almost like a little multiverse. So the idea is you can actually go downstairs and there's a little ramp, but you can go down the stairs. And then you can actually see that down below, 
there's an upside down. <laughs> so I really like the idea that here that uh, you're experiencing something completely unfamiliar. The idea is now you have an upside down. And really this build I think really lo looks to uh, reflect the idea of sort of a multiverse theory that you have the upside down, you have the right side up. And as you look down lower, as K continues down the ramp, you can see there's even more worlds down below that you can go ahead and explore and look at it. Definitely a fantasy uh, here, uh, as as you see the reflections in the buildings that are going down. It's a really cool trick with this builder to sort of give you that reflective piece for the water. Also, the ghost fish are interesting. And uh, also the thing about it here is this really drives you to explore or discover the game where you walk around. There's multi-layered. There's lots of different things that are going on. Uh, you see a lot of this piece here. So we've already got the sensation. We've got the fantasy, uh, definitely imagine, like I said, definitely an imaginary world. You have the discovery because there's lots of little nooks and crannies to check things out. And then you also have expression is here as well because back up top, uh, there was actually going ahead and there was a little thing, just like Kay showed you in the Halls of Story, they have different pieces that allow you to modify your avatar. In this case, in this world, it was mermaids. So you could go ahead and you could look up your favorite mermaid costume uh, that you wanted. Obviously for female avatars, uh, but uh, they also have Venus in a shell as well uh, that you can purchase. So there's lots of things uh, that you can go ahead and look around and, and check out. And they're just kind of all hidden around. That's the nice thing about uh, a theory is it has all these little nooks and crannies where as you walk around and explore, you start finding different things. And so they do a really good job of piquing your interest and moving you from place to place. And it's like Kay's moving into the retail space. So this is one of the little places they have where you can go ahead and see that uh, they have a little bit of lots of little different things for people to purchase uh, that are very mermaid oriented. Sim number three of our five faves is erstwhile. Okay, this is one of my favorite. Just be well, it's steampunk, so that part really helps. And the other part that really helps is the fact that they decided to make a floating city using basically dirigibles. And let's get flying here. So oh, I started here on top, but take a look at this. Think about every steampunk or sci-fi movie you've ever known and loved. Hey, think about it if the city that you came to was actually all the different shops were the you know were spaceships were dirigibles flying in or were spaceships or they allowed you to come to a platform where everybody parked and then everybody went inside the ship all, all I can think about when, when when I'm thinking about this all I can think about really is this is exactly what I would expect at some point if Firefly <laughs> had made more than 13 episodes. So when you come here, you end up on the top of the steampunk city, but then you get to just roam around seeing all the beautiful gadgets, seeing all the beautiful, I, I have to say, rust and everything else that you normally associate with some part of steampunk. You follow the stairway down and then you get into this area. In this area you can see all the little portions of the fairy fest showing up. Meaning all what you would consider the fairy land colors, all the fairy fest. You can come in here, there are some more shops. And basically, this area is just this beautiful build that has all the levels of steampunk and then just throws the additional things on to make you want to continue wandering. So am I experiencing something familiar? Yes. Am I also experiencing something unfamiliar? Yes. Take a look at this beautiful steampunk ship. Does it make me want to continue exploring? Does it make me want to continue 
roaming around, absolutely. And for my own creativity, there's everything that I need here to go to different, to learn about different events, go to different events, and also decide that I'm going to go to, say, that mass ball, that I'm going to be going a little differently, and that I might take a little bit of steampunk and a little bit of fairy when I go ahead and do that. And that is why this is, and I'm going to do the drawback. This is one of our top five areas. And it's absolutely beautiful. And Fairy Fest is now open. The Fantasy Festival is now going to be open until May 7th. So I would suggest you come in and take a look at it. Free place number four, Ardessa. So Ardessa is unique in that what we'll see from Ardessa is that we start off here in a nice manner. You see there's a dance balls there, so we're starting to see the ability to uh, expression and a way for you to express yourself and change things around. Uh, we have some different options, uh, these little squares that aren't quite done loading yet, uh, but they give you different options to purchase items and then explore different spaces as well. And as we move around, you'll see with Ardessa, is it's really set up as a mystical forest or fantasy forest. There's lots of cool things hidden on the undergrowth. Uh, I'm sort of taking a larger view uh, here and zoomed out. So it definitely gives you to go ahead and look at the unfamiliar. I mean, we see some different things, some sprites, some fairy circles. Uh, the the plant life is is different. You see lots of different zones from evergreen forests to we have weeping willows and cherry blossoms. And we have birds flying around. So there's some very familiar things. But then we have these like little hidden areas, little hidden gardens. We have a couple different light sources that are there. You see there's some other players here exploring, uh, going around the build, checking things out. Uh, and so one of the nice things about Ardessa is it's really just very visually appealing. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, there's lots of really cool things down through here. It definitely has a touch of fantasy that's out there. It definitely makes you want to think about you're in a science fiction or in a fantasy novel uh, that's out there and you're sort of in the wild forest. Uh, and again, there's, again, there's lots of little paths and side paths to really sort of get you to explore and see different things. Uh, and also allows you to look at different perspectives as well. So you can you can either fly over the area or as most as most of uh, the visitors in this world have found out, by following paths, you get to see different things as you head down. We have some, you know, we have biofluorescent uh, plant life here, which is kind of interesting to set up. So there's lots of different cool things here in Ardessa. And it's one of the really, one of the, the, the builds I really like is because it's really well put together. They combine so much nature and, and wildlife and trying to build that forest theme that they actually do a really good job and make you, make you feel that you're in a very green, lush space. And you can see there's little pathways that take you off the beaten path. There's gardens. There's lots of little nooks and crannies that are hidden all over the place. Uh, you have water features. You have various different plant life. Uh, for, like I said, from a wide variety of different zones. So that's one of the reasons why it makes it kind of unfamiliar. Not many places you can walk in and see, you know, rainforest and tropical plants next to northern climate plants. So there's lots of different things you see here, uh, here in the world that you can go ahead and, and check out. So now we'll go ahead and we'll move on to our next place. So five, the number five of our five faves is the Falls of Hope. Okay, I'm here in the Falls of Hope, and this is exactly where you land if you get there, if you get their landmark. And I'm facing forward, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn my avatar around so that you guys can take a look. You'll see it's very lush. You'll see the falls right behind us, but at the same point in time, this is actually a build that's next to our Dessa. And you'll see that the tide, they've done a wonderful job at going ahead and putting the falls out there. 
Water is very difficult to do in virtual worlds. You just have to get it right. And I also love that the, that the site where they decided that we would go ahead and land is a site where if I pause a moment or two, um, the tide comes in. So this is definitely an area where where it's meant to explore. And I'm not gonna explore the whole thing, but we're gonna show you a couple of the things. And I guess for for me, when it comes to the, the mechanics, dynamics, and aesthetics again, um, as far as the sensation that I'm experiencing something unfamiliar, yes, there's not a lot of bills that you see the tide coming in like this. And that if you stay put, that you'll see ripples and then you'll see the tide again. They did that wonderful. And as far as the fantasy, that this is make-believe or an imaginary world, absolutely. And I, I feel completely at home <laughs> wearing fairy wings into this. The next thing, discovery. Do I have an urge to explore this? Absolutely. And then expression or my own creativity. Yes, we'll get that coming up. Because what this place is, while it's called the Falls of Hope, this is actually a merchant store place. So think of a mall that gets sent in, that gets set in something like this. So this store actually sells drakes or dragons. <laughs> and if I if I walk a little further, I can see what else is being sold. Now this one, this one looks like it does scenery and design. Beautiful. I'll keep walking here, and as I go, there's different little things that keep getting my attention. There's different ferns that I'm seeing. I'm seeing the landscape happening here. I'm seeing over here, this looks like more scenery. Beautiful. So if you wanted to decorate your place in a virtual world that with something like you're seeing here, you can go ahead and get this. And this archway... Okay, this archway that looks like a portal, that is definitely getting my attention. And this is making me go, okay, I need to go further. So I really like this Merchants of Hope area. Here I am. I'm going through their portal. Not really. <laughs> and then I'm getting into this further area that's allowing me to look at, at merchandise and think about, well, what do I want? What could I get for my avatar, for my land? I'm just going to stop in here. I'm waiting a minute, and it looks like, oh, I can get fountains. I can get jewelry. I can get different outfits that are very distinctively fairyland. <laughs> so this is going to be our last stop. And I'd say, and this is just reminding me, you know, like the book cover, Mists of Avalon. That, that's, that's, how, that's how nice it is. And I can follow along this path and go a little bit further. Or I can go ahead and I can just go back through the portal. And I'm going to go back over here to the, to the Merchants of Dreams and the Falls of Hope. And these were our top favorite spots for Fantasy Fair for 2018. So I hope you enjoy them. And we have a couple things just to put in our conclusion. So again, we were using mechanics, dynamics, and aesthetics. And I wanted to just show you something here. Will Wright is actually having a proxy art challenge. If you're an educator and you wanted to show things like this to your students, you can take your students to something like this so that they can start getting ideas about how would they do the art in a game world or a virtual world. And you can go ahead and go to this website of Proxy and see the new game that Will Wright is coming out with. And they are actually having a competition that you can submit your game art to to see if you can go ahead and get a job helping produce Proxy. And since we're ending, we would like to remind you there is one LitFest tour available, and it will be on Ardessa, and that is the world that Chris went ahead and showed. There is also the Mass Ball, which will be happening today, and that's 2 p.m., and that's Pacific time, and it is Euro-friendly, so our friends from Europe can actually still happen when they're awake.
As far as ISTE Games and Sims, we will be back on May 27th with Games and Ethics. And don't forget to visit us at the ISTE Conference, which will be happening this year in Chicago. And we will be doing three events for it. The Network Fair, uh, the Games Playground, and the Games Night. So thank you very much, and we will be ending the broadcast now. Goodbye.